This is Need to Know with Jeff Greenfield, Scott Simon, Ray Suarez, and this week, Maria Inojosa. On this edition, the road to the White House may run through Florida. Why the growing power of that state's Latino vote could help determine whether Barack Obama is reelected or not. He still has a mess, but I just can't fathom the thought of where we would be if he didn't do what he's done so far. Or can Mitt Romney win over enough Latino voters to capture Florida? Governor Romney has the same values of a Hispanic. Church, marriage, family, business. Yo decido. Next on Need to Know. Welcome to this special edition of Need to Know. Like both presidential candidates, we've made many visits to Florida during the 2012 campaign, and for good reason. With 29 electoral college votes, it's by far the biggest swing state prize on November 6. Both Governor Romney and President Obama are fighting hard for it. Somewhat predictably, the future of entitlement programs like Social Security and Medicare get a lot of attention here. And both candidates are understandably trying to win over the senior vote with their respective plans. But that's not the only voting block they're going after, nor the only one that wields power in the Sunshine State. In many parts of the nation, the Latino vote is a growing force. Nationally, the latest polls show President Obama leading by a wide margin in that community. Here in Florida, Latinos make up roughly one in seven registered voters. How they might vote, as we discovered, is anything but predictable. Vertica Cabrera Morris may have one of the toughest jobs in this election season. This lady was here for a long time. Come here. This 55-year-old Cuban-American is volunteering her time, day in and day out, trying to turn the tide of Florida's Latino voters and get them to support Mitt Romney. I am a Hispanic woman from a very little town in Cuba called Ciego de Avila, and today I'm able to uh, run a business. I'm also able to help the next president of the United States. This was the past 12 years. Cabrera Morris is a political consultant in Central Florida and quite a mover and shaker in Latino politics here. Many Republicans have sought out her support. Governor Bush was my first. I believed in him. Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney. Mm -hmm. All right. And McCain. And this year, she's backing Romney. She had a real kinship with him. They both ran their own businesses. He's a statesman, you know, he's a CEO. Each of them have five children. They're both devoutly religious, though she's Catholic to his Mormon. I think that Governor Romney um, has the same values of a Hispanic. For an example, uh, church, um, marriage, uh, family, business. I feel very at home with them. But for her, it's not just the personal similarities that matter. Where's the United States of America flag? She believes Romney has a plan to fix the economy, a plan that can pull in more Latino voters. They want to have a president that is going to help them with the economy. It's all about jobs. So in their case is if you give us uh, somebody that can produce a better economy, we're going to go vote for them. Cabrera Morris works in Orlando, Florida, an area that's not only one of the most hotly contested stretches of real estate in this presidential campaign, but it's also become ground zero for the fight for Latino voters. Local TV in Florida has been blanketed for months with wall-to-wall -wall campaign ads, many of them aimed directly at Latino voters. Soy Barack Obama. Orlando sits in the middle of what's known as the I-4 corridor, which stretches across central Florida from Daytona Beach to Tampa. And the economy of central Florida does seem like fertile ground for the GOP, with thousands of foreclosures, shuttered businesses, and unusually high unemployment. But while the economy was a concern for everyone we met, some voters argued that Obama doesn't deserve the blame. In fact, they say he deserves some credit. I'm going to vote for Obama. And it's, you know, I, I kind of look at it as, as uh, one more chance, you know. But to me, the man has done more than 
anybody could have anticipated because he was handed a mess. He still has a mess, but I just can't fathom the thought of where we would be if he didn't do what he's done so far. Ray Rivera is a man who's experienced the rough road of this economy firsthand. He's a 53-year-old Puerto Rican who lives just north of Tampa. He's working now as a clerk at a cable repair company, but he'd been out of a job for over a year. Thanks to unemployment benefits, food stamps, and a federal program to help struggling homeowners, he was able to avoid the economic disaster that hit so many of his neighbors. There are many, many homes in my neighborhood that are foreclosed and vacant. The house next to me is, is on auction. The house across the street from me is vacant. The house across the corner and one house up is also vacant. And these are all my neighbors that I had for 10, 15 years. See you, Tony. Though he's making less than he used to, Rivera's slowly getting back on his feet. He says he's going to vote for Obama because he thinks Democrats are more concerned about working families and they'll level what he says is an unfair tax system. To have the middle class pay all the taxes and have tax breaks given to the ones who are the wealthiest, to me, seems very unfair. To me, being able to take care of the nation's needs, that to me is the most important thing. As a Puerto Rican voter, Ray Rivera represents one of the biggest demographic and political shifts in Latino voting in Florida. And given Florida's primacy in presidential politics, how the Ray Riveras of the world vote could have major implications. Usually when people were interested in Hispanic or Latino politics in Florida, they thought about Miami. And that was for a good reason. Uh, Miami had a huge concentration of Cubans and Cuban Americans, and they were dominant as far as Latino politics for the longest time, going back at least to the mid-1970s. Luis Martinez Fernandez teaches history at the University of Central Florida in Orlando. He says those Cubans in Miami were overwhelmingly Republican and often tipped Florida to the GOP. But that's now changed because of the dramatic growth of Latino voters up along that I-4 corridor. Among them are immigrants from Mexico, Venezuela, the Dominican Republic, and Colombia. But the majority of these new voters are Puerto Ricans who are U.S. citizens by birth, and a majority of them are Democrats. So what we're seeing now, uh, a few weeks out of the election, is that we have reached that tipping point where the Democratic vote, predominantly Puerto Rican, has already neutralized the Cuban vote. They pledge allegiance to our flag. What's more, this past June saw perhaps the single biggest move by President Obama that could pay huge dividends in securing Latino support in Florida and nationwide. They were brought to this country by their parents, uh, sometimes even as infants. That's when President Obama announced that he would allow most young immigrants, those who came to the U.S. as children without papers, to apply for legal work permits. Obama's move came as a surprise to many, especially because up to that point, the Obama administration had been deporting record numbers of immigrants, roughly 400,000 each year. Despite that, Obama's announcement received overwhelming support from Latinos. But for Republicans like Bertica Cabrera Morris, there's a little lady over there without okay. a sign. The president's move before the election and after years of inaction feels like a political ploy. I think that the Democratic Party just pandered to us three months ago, giving us an immigration policy that really had no, you know, why didn't they do this before? If you love me, don't tell me you love me when you need me. Tell me you love me a year ago or three years ago when you could. Historian Luis Martinez Fernandez says. Regardless of the merits of Obama's action, this move highlighted for many Latino voters the differences between the parties on the issue of immigration. And in that comparison, he says, Republicans suffered badly. They've heard things such as self-deportation. They've seen how uh, states like Arizona and other states, Alabama, have created these laws that are very hostile to immigrants and to Hispanics in general. Um, you can't escape that. If the party goes in one direction, there will be consequences. And that is what we're seeing. The Republican Party has the lowest support among Hispanics in this country that it has ever had. Precisely at a time 
when that Hispanic vote is essential for any party to win the elections. For one family we met in Central Florida, President Obama's decision had a direct impact. 18-year-old David Velasquez, whose family is from Colombia, says he and his relatives aren't usually interested in politics. Some hadn't even registered to vote. But when Obama's announcement came out, that all changed. Why? Because of David's 19-year-old uncle, Juan Soto Abella. Juan came to the U.S. from Colombia with his parents, who were seeking political asylum, when he was just 10 years old. Now, because of Obama's move, Juan can possibly stay here legally in this country. I, I actually teared up uh, of happiness. Juan is a sophomore at a nearby college, a straight-A student and president of the student body. He was doing homework when he heard the news about Obama's action. Just the thought of just having that opportunity to, to contribute back to, to the society, to be, to be able to work, to be able to just kind of have that, that feeling, that grasp of, of, of the American dream. It affects me directly because it's not only like my uncle, it's like my brother. I've made up my mind who I'm going to vote for. Obama is obviously right now the um, most supportive candidate for my family and me. And he's not alone. National polls show Latinos across the country favoring Obama over Romney by large margins. The numbers right now look like they're not in favor of right. your candidate, Romney. Maria, I don't believe it. I don't believe that. I don't see that in the people in the community. I don't see that in the cars. You know, I see Romney, Romney, Romney uh, signs, and then you see an old Obama sticker. Um, I don't see that in the street. I don't see when I go knock door to door. People are hurting. People Cabrera are hurting. Morris says, if you don't think Romney's economic message is taking root with Latinos, go talk with someone like her good friend, Fernando Perez. This election is about an economic recovery. Uh, it's about the future of my kids. Perez um, is a 37-year-old married father of three. He's Puerto Rican and grew up on the island in a politically conservative family. He now works in sales for a medical company in Orlando. For him, President Obama's inability to sharply reduce unemployment is one of the main reasons to vote him out of office. We got unemployment on the Hispanic population over 10%. You know, there's 23 million Americans looking for work. So, you know, the future is pretty, pretty grim right now. There's two million more Hispanics in poverty levels than they were before. So no matter how pretty your words are, you gotta, you gotta show me some execution. Ronald Reagan once famously said that Hispanics are Republicans. They just don't know it yet. Many in the GOP argue that Latinos share many of the same conservative beliefs as their party on things like fiscal issues and family values. So when you think back about what Ronald Reagan said, you believe that's true? Well, that's how I became an American citizen. I didn't know what Republican or Democrats were. I just saw one day this man speaking. He was my governor. I lived in California. And I said, what, is he, what party is he? And they said, he's a Republican. I said, OK, that's what I am. But Reagan wasn't just talking about economics. It's also true that Latinos are more socially conservative and more religious than other Americans. And as we found here in Florida, faith and politics can intersect in complicated ways. On the surface, Herman and Arlene Tirado, both Puerto Rican, would seem likely to vote Democratic. Herman's been unemployed for over a year and received lots of government help, like unemployment and food stamp benefits. Arlene has multiple sclerosis and has been receiving Social Security disability benefits for many years. So on that front, you'd think they'd back the party, which has often championed those programs. But the Dorados are also Pentecostal Christians. While more than 60 percent of Latinos are Catholic, Hispanics are also growing within the ranks of evangelical Christians. So for the Dorados, Voting in sync with their religious values takes precedence over everything else. And for them, that means they're voting Republican. We began to realize that we're more towards the conservative side because we, come, we both come from a very religious background and we are <clears throat> very founded in, in, in the Word and in the Bible. We realized that, you know, these issues about abortion and um, gay marriage also, 
is so important for us. Um, we just believe in the Word and um, believe that those are things that are very important for us. I think that actually this is probably one of the strongest points that, that Governor Romney has because in the idea of life, uh, you know, he's very strong. And in the idea of freedom of religion, you know, uh, us Catholics, a lot of Hispanics, as you know, are Catholic, um, have a big issue over this decision that was part of Obamacare about whether or not Catholic institutions have to pay for birth control. And number three is same-sex marriage. And the Hispanic community doesn't embrace any of those things. That's been the traditional view of Latinos, that they're very conservative on social issues. But a Pew Hispanic poll released just this week shows that a majority of Latinos now support gay marriage. What's more, other polls show that Latinos ranked issues like jobs, education, immigration, and health care as even more important to them. This can make for some interesting splits at the ballot box. For example, back in 2008, a majority of Latinos in California voted to ban gay marriage. But those same voters also went in large numbers for President Obama. Here in Florida, we met one young woman who embodies this seeming contradiction. Criseli Melesio Sambrano is a senior at the University of Central Florida in Orlando. She was born here in Florida. Her parents are Dominican and Venezuelan. Sambrano is a devout Catholic. She helps run the Catholic ministry on campus, and she believes deeply that abortion is morally unjustifiable. I was raised in a household where it was very real. Um, it, it wasn't just something that was like, okay, we're pro-life. It was, these are human beings um, at stake and you should be aware of that and do what you can to, to fight for that. So on that basis, Sambrano's clearly drawn to supporting Republicans. But she also strongly believes in what she calls the Catholic Church's mission of social justice, caring for the poor and the sick. She says that tends to draw her towards Democrats. How do you put those things together then? You're pro-life on the one hand, but very much social justice that's, you know, almost like the Republican and the Democratic side on opposite sides. Yes, absolutely. But in my head, it was always one central issue fighting for people in the most general sense. So there was no disconnect. And I remember always being so confused as a child because they would tell me like the issues of the different presidents and I'd be like, wait, <laughs> tell me again. Like the Republicans believe, wait, I'm like, there's not a box for me. Like <laughs> what, what do I do with that? So on the one hand, you're thinking you're pro-life. You've got to go Republican. But on the other hand, then I also look at once the child is born, are they being taken care of? Are their needs being met? And if you disregard that, then there's a huge disconnect. Because you kind of think that the Democrats, or President Obama, is more responsible in terms of taking care um, of the child. Yes, after. After it's <laughs> after born. After it's been born, yes. Sambrano has decided, but would rather not say who she's voting for. This guy here is Jose Angel Morero Rodriguez, Sr. Jose Angel Rodriguez also believes that the Democrats tend to care more about the health and well-being of people like him. This is my little baby girl, Gabrielle. This 56-year-old, originally from Puerto Rico, has spent nearly his whole life in public service. He was in the Air Force. He was an Orlando firefighter for over 20 years. Now that he's retired, he receives a $31,000 annual pension. He also runs the local Little League. When he's not on the ball field, he's often here at this rehab facility with his wife, Janice. They have three children and four grandchildren. Janice has been in this facility for months. She's battling cancer, heart, and kidney disease. Her care has been paid for, in large part, by the federal government's Medicaid and Medicare programs. Nobody's gonna stop me from coming to see you unless I'm dead, in jail. I love you. That's my job, right? That's what I do. You get, what, what did you give me, an A? Give me an A, A minus. I need Medicare. I ain't rich. It's expensive, I know. 
But what? My wife, she had a heart attack. She's had cancer twice. She's been sick all her life. You know, people don't understand how, how important Medicare is. Rodriguez says he was going to vote for Obama no matter what. But he's even more sure about that now because, he says, Romney and the Republican Party want to cut the programs that he and his family depend on. Health care for everybody is mandatory. It's, it's like a right. Now you want to take it away because you guys messed up the, the budget, you know? And now you're going to steal my, 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 my daughter, my grandson's health care, which was guaranteed by Roosevelt, John F. Kennedy. That's the Democratic Party of the old, and that's, John, and that's Obama, the new. For other Latino voters in Florida, the election isn't about one policy decision, not about Medicare or education or the economy. Sometimes it's about something much more basic. Alexa Castro is a 37-year-old single mom who lives in Winter Springs, Florida. She grew up in Puerto Rico in one of the toughest housing projects on the island. Come on, let's get ready. But she made it out went to college, got a master's degree, and now works for the Girl Scouts of America, helping to do outreach in the Latino community. You can't afford another four years like the last four years. Alexa says she doesn't follow politics or the issues very closely, but she's voting for President Obama this year, just like she did in 2008. She loved voting for the nation's first black president, someone who looked a little bit like her. But the importance of that symbolism was really driven home for her just last year. My little one, my four-year-old, out of the blue, she come up to me and as she caresses her skin, she says, Mommy, I don't want to be brown anymore. My heart sank. I just stopped. And I looked at her and I said, what do you mean, mamita? And she's like, I don't like my color. This is a four-year-old. She's like, I don't like to be brown. So what color do you want to be? I want to be white. Those were her exact words. I want to be white. And that's why voting for President Obama became a central issue for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You wanted to be able to say to your daughter, look at the president. He's got your skin color. And look at his wife. Look at his little girls. They're just like you. You have to be a big girl. He can be a role model for a lot of young minorities who have been thinking that you can only do so much in your life. Just a couple of weeks from the election, and Florida is still a prime destination for the candidates. Governor Romney was here 12 days ago, and President Obama came last week. Obama visited as a series of polls came out showing that his lead among Latino voters in Florida had shrunk. While the president still has a big lead nationwide, among Florida's Latinos, it's much closer. For Bertica Cabrera Morris, this is the momentum she was waiting for. Before we left Florida, she was busy organizing another Romney event, this one with Mitt Romney's youngest son, Craig, who's fluent in Spanish. Bertica's friend and fellow Romney supporter, Fernando Perez, came too. I feel very, very involved this time. What I'm trying to do is to put my two cents and, you know, spread what I believe is my conviction of the best path for our country. And not only for Latinos, but for everybody. I believe this is a historical election. Uh, I'm passionate about what I'm doing right now more than I have ever been in my many years of life. I'm a woman of faith. And I, before I do anything in my life, I pray. And then God, you know, we'll see what happens. This week online, take part in our weekly poll. The topic, preserving entitlement programs for the elderly. Let us know what you think and why. Visit pbs.org slash need to know. I'm Maria Hinojosa. Thanks so much for joining us.